Hey, what's going on guys? Be Flatten here with a brand new video here today. Today we're going to be ranking all Borderlands DLCs in two specific tiers. We're talking Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2, 3, and the pre-sequel, and we're going to be ranking them in different tiers. Now before we get into ranking all these Borderlands DLCs, I just want to make a note and a point of reference that tier lists suck. Tier lists suck because everyone is going to have a different approach and a different opinion on which DLC is which, thus causing a clash and a separation of the community. However, if you can go into tier lists with an open mind and seeing it from another person's perspective, tier lists are great. So I'm hoping that uh, everyone can see this with an open mind and have a uh, great uh agreement or a uh, great disagreement so without further ado this is my tier list and i'm going to be ranking them in different categories categories such as like item viability story length uh hilarity of uh like humorous borderland stuff all different categories and there's also going to be subcategories for each one where i may give points and i might deduct points from each one all right so let's get into it right away shall we I think we should just start off with the easy ones and pick those off and then that way we can get into uh, some of the more harder ones. So first and foremost, Claptastic Voyage, please get into S tier. We may move you around, we might have a few uh, changes with you right away, but for now you're going to sit in S tier at number one spot. Uh, where is Bounty of Blood? Bounty of Blood is also going to be probably floating between S and A, but I want to place it in S for now. Uh, where is big game hunt because you're going to F tier. I'm going to explain all these uh, in just a second while I move them around uh, We're going to put Guns love and tentacles into E tier. It's not as bad as big games hunt, but it's pretty bad at least in my opinion uh, All right, so these are the first easy four Claptastic Voyage, absolutely amazing DLC. The story was great. It carried the pre-sequel very well after the uh, launch of the game. It had some amazing items in it. Claptrap was great. Ending, um, it's it felt like it dragged on a little bit at the very end. Like once you get into um, the memory tubes or whatever they were, when you traveled back and forth between the long memory tubes, at that point in the game is where... It felt like it was sort of going on a little bit too long. However, they had pretty good pacing throughout the entire story. Uh, ending boss to get the um, uh, the things from the shadow trap or whatever it was. Uh, his main drop can only be farmed for once and you can't really farm it efficiently without a PC. Um, other than those two minor things, S tier all the way. Bounty of Blood, we've talked about Bounty of Blood before, I did a theory video, it had my mind spinning around like theories around Butcher Rose, um, the weapons are all great, they can world drop anywhere, you can get them in chests, in a lot of Borderlands DLC, you weren't able to get the items in chests, so it was uh, worthwhile to farm chests, um, Story was great. It was a little short. I'll be honest. It was a little short and it felt like there was a few things missing. However, um, as a standalone DLC, it really carried through as the only story soul DLC that didn't require like any nostalgia factors. So for me, that's an S tier. Um, I'm putting Big Games Hunt for Hammerlock's DLC because <laughs> it was a long story. Um, it was a very dragged on story. The final boss you don't even get to fight, Nakiyama, he kind of just falls to his death and that's that. Jackenstein was a really shitty boss as it's quoted final boss. Um, Dexy the Invincible, no one farmed Dexy. Uh, if you did farm Dexy, you are a brave soul. Um, triple Ohm, Triple O uh, for the, uh, the Twister shotgun. Um, there's two sides to that. Either you got very lucky with it in a reasonable rate, or you're pulling your hair out just by hearing the name Twister. And the only worthwhile item in that DLC was the blue item, the Rough Rider Shield. There, it actually had some viability on some characters. So that's why it's going to be going to the F tier for me, because it just had too many negatives and not a lot of uh, positives to weigh those out. Guns Love and Tentacles... 
it was cool as a concept. I wasn't really a big fan of the whole like Harry Potter, HP Lovecraft kind of theme. I know HP Lovecraft fans out there will probably disagree with me. You're probably shouting at me. Go for it. Um, items in the DLC. Some of them were okay. Uh, Skullmasher is really good now. Uh, the Anarchy is really cool. Returning character Dage, really cool. So those are positives. Another negative was a lot of the bosses were kind of shitty. Um, namely, the Empowered Scholar always had a chance to glitch out. And it was also a platforming boss. Not really fun. Um, and the final boss... Uh, the... What, what's her name? Uh, something in the Heart. Um, really, really annoying final boss. I kind of was like the final boss of uh, the Commander Lilith boss. So it seemed like there was a little bit of a plays on that. All right, let's get back into it, shall we? Um, Commander Lilith, we just talked about it. I'm going to put Commander Lilith into the F tier. Uh, Commander Lilith had a very short story. It didn't really connect anywhere to the Borderlands 3 when it was supposed to bridge us over there. The only thing that really did it for us was Lilith is the leader going into Borderlands 3, and that's it. Um, all the items in the new tier, the Everescent tier, was just um, reskins of... Um, it was just reskins of vanilla items that were just slightly better and or changed like the rocket launch of the world burn was just a fire nukem for example um so a lot of copy paste there and story was also copy pasted it's very very similar to lexi's space adventure that was cancelled from the pre-sequel and <laughs> it's funny too because uh the first area that you go into is called the back burner and i believe that that's a direct joke as to this has been on the borderlands back burner for quite some time that could be wrong but i just found that was uh, a pretty funny reference there um moxie's underdome riot from borderlands one we're finally going to borderlands one i'm going to put that into the d tier now moxie's underdome was going into the d tier for a couple of reasons it was kind of like there was no story to the dlc um it was very very grindy because you had to do like 40 rounds just to be able to get through everything um and there was like it wasn't just like rounds it was like sets of rounds so it was like you have to do five sets to do one round or something stupid like that it ended up being like hundreds and hundreds of uh, runs if you failed you had to you if you failed you had to like restart um it was good because you got level caps and it was good because you got bank spaces so that was a very huge thing in borderlands one the extra level caps and the bank space were massive um another cool thing is that it kind of had like a modifier system that borderlands 3 sees today except they were only in the dlc themselves and it was completely randomized and you fought a uh, story boss in the uh end of the rounds anyways so not really the greatest not the strongest but also had some viability so i'm putting that in the d tier um going back into borderlands 1 I think we're going to go with the General Knox because I see General Knox here. And we're going to put General Knox in the A tier. General Knox, I don't think, was as high tier as Claptastic Voyage and Bounty of Blood so far, only because Driving Simulator was horrible. Um, there wasn't a lot of fast travel areas, as in, like, for my prime example is going to be the final Claptrap in there. You had to do so much driving in order to get to uh, that final Claptrap to farm him for the backpack space, and you weren't even guaranteed to get in the second playthrough. So, uh, the lack of fast travels in there kind of drops it a little bit for me. However, story was great. Uh, Craw Marax was amazing. It was, like, the thing that carried Borderlands 1 hardcore. Um, Pearl Essence was great. Uh, the farmery not being fixed and it being just there the entire time was also excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, A tier for me. Um, hmm. We're running out of uh, room here. I think we're going to go with the Captain Scarlet. I think Captain Scarlet is going to be a... A tier for me as well. Captain Scarlet had an amazing story in it. I really like the sand skiffs. They were really nice, uh, like change of pace from the vehicles. Weapon viability, uh, let it be known as Sandhawk, the Pimpernel. A lot of characters uh, really benefited from those two items alone. Uh, Hyperius was great with the Norfleet. 
Um, all around really good. Um, the Seraph stuff was great for the crystals. I like that as well. It was a nice little optional thing on the side if you wanted to do it. Uh, yeah, no, it was good. I liked it. The zombie island of Dr. Ned going back in time to Borderlands 1 again. Um, that one's tough as well. I think we're going to put zombie island in right down Main Street, right down center, C tier. Um, I really like the hilarity of this uh, DLC. It was great. Um, the hilarity of it was amazing. Like the intro really got me immersed with the uh, Marcus's storytelling. Um, I like the challenges in there. Those were pretty cool. Um, the amount of times Denning swarmed in there was kind of annoying. And the other annoying thing was the brains um, achievement and mission going to TK Baja and you know getting 10 million brains or whatever the hell it was something obscure um its story wasn't as strong um i kind of liked how they played the whole ted ned uh zed thing and uh the repeat of the boss was kind of annoying as well but oh well uh it was pretty fun but it wasn't as strong or as prominent as the other four above it so far so it's a c tier for me fantastic fuster cluck uh, the newest story DLC that we got from Borderlands 3. I think we're going to sit this in the open slot in the B tier right now. It was a great nostalgic story, but actually nostalgia drops me points for me because it's not a standalone DLC. If it didn't have other structured supporting things, it wouldn't have been as strong. And if you tie it in with the uh, little bit of a short story, um, I can beat it in approximately 50 minutes at most. Um, along with the final boss just being an absolute tank, um, it seemed like they went with tank instead of uh, immunity phases on the final boss on this one. Kind of sucks. And the other thing that sucks was it kind of worked off of the General Knox DLC at the end with the whole uh, armory thing, like the secret buttons and whatever. However, the problem with that is that you can't have any DLC items drop in there. It's only vanilla stuff, and it's only the vanilla stuff that we don't want to farm for. I can farm Grave Ward, and I can farm uh, the Armory, and I can get much better results off of Grave Ward than farming the Armory, because I can't get anything exclusive from this Armory. So it drops down to a B tier for me. Uh, it does hold pretty strong, but B tier for me. Uh, four more options left. We're almost done. Let's go to the Claptrap's Robo Revolution. Uh, that's going to go into a C tier for me as well. Its story wasn't as strong. It was kind of short. Uh, their longevity of it was just killing Claptraps for their parts over and over. The silly achievements at the end were kind of low drop rate and kind of low tier. Uh, it's a mid tier for me. However, the thing that bumps it up a little bit more is that there's a mention of Eden 6 in there And Eden 6 was a planet that we can visit on Borderlands 3 So kind of a little bit of a foreshadowing in Borderlands 1 DLC all the way in up in time to Borderlands 3 So I thought that was pretty cool uh, Campaign of Carnage I'm gonna drop that down to an E tier Campaign of Carnage was a very slow DLC The bosses sucked uh, there's not a lot of weapon viability in there. Um, yeah, it's it's an easy E tier for me because uh, it, it was a slow pace and there wasn't really a lot to do in there. Um, yeah, there's nothing else I can really say about it. It's just E tier. It's very below, below average. Uh, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon's Keep, I'm going to put in there as a... I'm going to say an A tier. And the reason why it's an A tier, and it's actually behind, uh, you know what, we're going to put this in the forefront. We're going to put this over General Knox and uh, Captain Scarlet. The reason why Tiny Tina's is an A tier is because um, its nostalgia factor was really good. It's renowned as probably one of the better DLCs in the entire game. Um, however... It had a faster bee farm. That was another good thing. Uh, faster bee farm. You can farm it from the trees. The bad thing about it is that it holds the grog nozzle, which is like the most band-aid staple to Borderlands 2's like horrible, horrible um, um, scaling. It almost was railroaded and required. It was like the ultimate PVE pay-to-win um, like item in the entire game. 
if you go with just bosses and like general mobbing they probably hold and host some of the worst um like just normal gameplay in the entire game like immortal skeletons if you have an immortal skeleton and you go into fight for your life you can't kill it um the magi the skeleton magi they can just look at you and if you don't kill it in a blink of an eye it disappears and you have to wait half an hour for it to show up again um yeah so actually because of all that i'm gonna bump it down to a b tier behind fantastic fuster clock its gameplay was pretty below average it was pretty bad um and i don't think the nostalgic story is enough to keep it up the dragons um no one really farmed the dragons for anything other than i beat the dragons and for fun uh they didn't really drop anything besides the crystals and there was a faster way to do that with pyro pete um yeah no it, it was pretty mad for me uh handsome jackbot i'm gonna put that into um the last one and we're gonna put this into you know i'm gonna put this into s tier actually i like the handsome jackbot handsome jackbot holds um a lot of theories with it with the whole timothy lawrence thing with the returning character uh going back and fighting hyperion robots again was really cool because we didn't have that in the main story of borderlands 3 uh, we got new robots in there as cryo robots. Um, we got a pretty cool final boss. It also hosts the best money farm in the entire game, being the handsome jackpot in his treasure room. Uh, the scrap trap boss hosts the best EXP farm in the game, uh, along with anything like event wise. Scrap traps are always like king for that. Um, the story pacing was pretty cool. The only reason why I put it behind Bounty of Blood and Claptastic Voyage. Is there isn't a lot of bosses in there the bosses are kind of low um they don't really appear as often but anyways this is my template this is my uh uh tiers for the borderlands story dlcs i left out the headhunters because i kind of put them all at the same tier as you know a couple uh 10 15 minute uh story farms with the exception of the marcus uh headhunter being like absolute s s s s s tier it is just amazing um but yeah i think that's going to be doing it for me if you have any agreements or disagreements i would love to hear them from you guys uh let's try to keep this one as civil as possible because tier list can be pretty harsh and pretty hardcore if uh you tickle the wrong person's fancy i'll see you guys in the next video my name is b flattened and i'm signing on out of here take care all laters